Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we are going to learn how to deploy Agent Force Service Agent to external website. I have prepared a couple of steps which is required in order to deploy the agent to the external website. So first, we are going to set up an Agent Force Service Agent. Then we are going to set up the routing configuration and a queue. Then we are going to write a OmniFlow which is used to route the work from uh, external website agent to Agent Force. Then we are going to define a new messaging setting along with the embedded service deployment. Then we are going to use the code from embedded service deployment and add it to the external website so that we launch the agent on the external website. Then we are going to configure some cores and trust URLs for the security purpose. Then we are going to add some domains to the sites. Then we need to pass some variables from external website agent to Salesforce. So for that, we are going to create some variables into messaging setting and activating those parameters, those variables into embedded service deployment. And we will also understand the difference between hidden and vis visible parameters, how to pass uh, and how to capture those values from external website to Salesforce. Then at the end, we are going to do an end-to-end test for the agent in external website. So before I start creating the agent for service agent, we need an external website. Now I don't have any external website, so I am going to use a GitHub, uh, my GitHub account, which is going to expose a external website, a fake, a dummy external website. So this is my GitHub account. I have created a repository called agent.github.io. And in this repository, I have added a file index.html. This index.html is nothing. It's just a simple basic dummy HTML, which is going to give me a UI for a Google screen. So if I launch this, so if I go to the settings and pages and visit, so this is going to be my external website for today's video where I'm going to treat this as an external website. And my requirement is that I need to expose my Salesforce agent to this external website. So I simply use the chat GPT and ask, can you please give me the HTML for Google? And then the chat GPT give me some couple of lines of code, which I use in my index.html. That's it. You can use your external website, any website. If you want to expose your agent, you can use that. So. The first step is to set up the agent force service agent. So let me go to my org and set up and simply go to agent force agents. Now I have a couple of service agents available. So I'm trying to save some time and then I'll use one of them uh, in order to deploy. So maybe I use Salesforce Cody, which I have created very recently. So let me test this. So it has a couple of topics. It gives the details about the books, uh, cases, currency conversion, escalation and orders. So maybe we can test this agent first, whether it is working or not. And then we can deploy this agent to our external website, which is in the Google, which is a fake website. So now if I simply go to, let's say cases, and I would like to see the case status for this case. So I just copy this case and simply ask, what is the case status of this? So the case status of this number is working, which is this agent is working now. We are going to deploy this agent. So that means our first step is completed. We have our service agent available and activated. The next step is to create a routing configuration. So to create a routing configuration, we need to go to the setup and search for routing configuration, which I already have available. So it's a very simple record. Uh, you just need to go to the routing configuration and click new. And then you need to set uh, your priority. I just set my uh, routing configuration priority one which is mostly available and then the units of capacity will be handled as two. That's it. And the next step is we need to establish a queue. Basically, we need a new queue. So I already have a queue available uh, as messaging queue. While creating the messaging queue, you need to keep in mind that you select the object as messaging session because the agent force works on messaging session record. So whenever you start a conversation with the agent, it instantly created a new messaging session record. That's why we created this queue and we set the object as messaging session. Now, I also added myself to the queue member because I'm a system admin. You can add n number of users to the queue members. So that means our queue part is also done. Now, the next part is develop an OmniFlow. The reason for creating the OmniFlow is because we need to route the work to the agent. For example, if the external website user is going to start the conversation with the agent, then we need to route the work to the Salesforce agent force agent. That's why we needed a OmniFlow. So if I go to the flows and search for OmniFlow somewhere, maybe root to agent flow, root flow service agent root to work yep so this is a very basic flow which basically i'm rooting the work to the agent uh, root to we have a couple of options i have selected i'm i'm going to root the work to the agent for service agent and then we have to select our uh, agent so i'm going to root my work to the salesforce Cody agent and the, this is the messaging queue which we have created in the previous step and then i'll click save I'm also updating the messaging session record where I have created a customer email uh, as a field, as a custom field, and I'm getting this value from the agent, uh, from the external website, basically from the uh, 
hidden and visible uh, parameters which we are going to talk about very uh, soon so once i'm going to receive the email i am storing to the messaging session customer email field which i'm using in my agent for further processing so let me activate this flow done and then we are going to see whether this flow is going to connect it with our agent or not so this is our agent if we are going to the connection we can see the inbound omnichannel flow is already connected because we have selected this agent into the flow so that is also done now the next step is very important the next two steps are very important we need to create a messaging set setting record and then we also need to create a embedded service deployment so let's first create the messaging setting now let me go to the new start and we need to make sure we select messaging for in app and web and here we can give some channel name let's say github because i'm going to deploy this to the github messaging setting and this is going to be web and the domain the domain should be our this github.com and we don't need this https and slash slash it's simply github next now the routing type the routing type should be omniflow route to work and this is the messaging queue which we have created save now this is going to uh, take some time some couple of seconds maybe so let's wait for uh, this to finish cool uh, my messaging setting is created uh, let me check if there is anything I need to do there are couple of uh, customer inactivity settings I will leave it as by default and I'm not going to do anything so that means our messaging setting is done now the next step is the ser embedded service deployment so to create uh, let me check yes my messaging setting is ready and which is now active which is great now i'm going to create the embedded service deployment so i can see the embedded service deployment is also created automatically as soon as i created the messaging setting so now i'm just going to validate whether it is successfully created or not yes it is created and which is active as well and this is published also so this is also done uh, now we need to integrate the code into the external website so if we go to our embedded service deployment and if we go to the uh, code snippet where we can see this code so this is the only piece of code which we need to add to the external website and then the agent will be available instantly so i'm just going to copy the code and i am going to my index.html so inside the body tag let me zoom this a little bit inside the body tag i can paste my piece of code anywhere so let, let me do it in the very end so now if you can see after the footer i have added my script which is uh, basically this is setting the language this is going to initialize my agent this is going to be my messaging setting api name the record id and some extra details this is going to be the domain and that's it so that's how we can uh, deploy our agent to the external website so let me save this and let me go to github because i have added some code to the index.html so i need to uh, re-upload this file so i'm gonna re-upload this file so this is my uh, updated index.html and I am going to commit the changes. Okay, so now that is done. Uh, also, I think just to confirm whether this file is updated or not, let me update something to the HTML front end. So let's say I am going to update something. Um, so this is Google. Uh, what should I update? Let's say in the about, I can simply add 100. So I just want to make sure whenever I launch this uh, website uh, i should see this updated version so that we can make sure our agent is also uh, loaded so let me re-upload this html and commit changes oh something is not working let me do it again and commit changes yep our file is added successfully let me go to the settings to the pages and let me refresh this let me close this and then visit website and because I can only I still see about if you look at this uh, mouse cursor I still see about I don't see about 100 because this is what I have uh, updated here so that means our code has not yet deployed so let me refresh this until I see the 100 or I think I need to remove the cache so let me re hopefully this time I can see uh, I can see it's deployed by this one minute ago yeah I can see 100 but I don't see my agent that means we, our code is successfully deployed but I still don't see my agent and now there are a couple of reasons for that so we integrated the code uh, into an external website to launch the agent but we have to configure some codes and trust URLs for the security purpose that's the reason we don't see our agent so now let's go and 
simply copy this url and 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 simply first go to course uh, and we need to add this here so we have added our domain here and same thing we are going to do with the trust urls let's say github access and we need to make sure we select this frame src and image src save okay uh, i can't put a space that's fine so this is also done so we added the course and trust url now we need to add the domain the same domain to the sites so if you go to the sites this sites and un under user interface sites and domains we can simply register this here we will see our embedded service deployment which we have created so this is our site and you need to add the same domain here just click add domain and then save done so this step is also done now let's try again so i just need to make sure my code is updated so i'm going to update this from 100 to 101 and then i'll re-upload the file code add file drag here successfully and commit changes done let me close this settings pages and i need to now make sure i will see 101 instead of 100 i can still see 100 that means still not updated let's wait a couple of seconds let's remove all the cache memory and do the hard reload it still says four minutes ago until it it says now or one minute ago we can keep trying yeah it says now now but it still says 100 let me refresh reload reload let me do one more time yeah i can see 101 but i still don't see my agent so let me close this and launch again okay okay uh, let me try again let me do a hard reload one more time empty cache and hard reload close hopefully this time we can see our agent yes so now i can finally see my agent is available and this is my uh, service agent so if we start having conversation with the agent let's see so you can see the salesforce Cody joint because we have deploy our salesforce Cody agent and now let's ask the same question what is the case status of let me copy the case number and it says the status of case is working so that means our agent is successfully deployed to the external website now the next step the next step is if we want to create some variables uh, and so there are two types of variables hidden variables and visible variables visible variables are those when you start having a conversation you will see some certain fields such as first name last name email and then you populate those fields and then you can start having conversation so those are the visible fields uh, hidden fields are those as soon as you start having conversation you your website your external website is going to pass some data to your agent to your embedded service deployment and that is that values is going to use further for processing for some different calculations so let me go to the embedded service deployment and this is pre-chat so this is called pre-chat hidden fields pre-chat visible fields so if we are going to edit this we have to first activate this feature that is a part of activate and configure parameters but first we have to create a new variable within the messaging setting so for example if i go to the messaging settings and this is my messaging setting here i need to create a custom parameter so let's say i am going to create customer email and customer email this is going to be my api name and channel variable name should be customer email string and let's say 50 done so we have created our first parameter now if we go to our embedded service deployment we are going to see this variable so if i'm first going to activate so let's complete this step because we have created our new variable in the messaging setting now we have activated this and we are going to see this customer email because this is available in our messaging setting now it's totally upon us how we want to capture the customer email from the external website either we want to capture it front or we want to capture it from the back so i want to capture it from the visible i don't want to capture it from the hidden so that's why i'm going to create a new custom field which is let's say text and this is customer email because this is we just created in the messaging setting save and now you see the customer email is no more available here because we have used in the visible so now I'm, I'm going to mark this as required and i'm going to save it and publish done so this is going to take some time 
that means this step is also completed now we have to test the agent and we also we will also do some code changes so let me refresh this page and end the chat and now you can see because i have created a customer email so i can see this field here now i can simply write my email and and i can start the conversation and the conversation has been started now the second part is how we can pass the email from here to salesforce so that's also we need to make some code changes i'm not going to do that but i'm going to show you how you can do that so here where you have added your code to launch the agent so somewhere here you can add this line of code let me copy four piece of code so here you need to add a couple of uh, lines in order to set the parameters so let me copy the piece of code which i have already saved so this is going to be the four piece of code uh, i am going to add a event listener where i have added this api and then my method name is uh, visible pre chat fields and this is going to be your key your variable api name which you have just created in your messaging setting so if we look at our messaging settings for github you will see we have created the customer email api name so you can pass the value like this and you can put any value whatever you want to set uh, again if you don't want to pass the values in visible format then you can simply change it to hidden and this is how you can set there is a very important documentation for this let me show you that so this is going to be the document uh, if you want to pass the hidden uh, set the hidden pre-chat fields you can do like this uh, and if you if you would like to pre-populate some fields so this is the line of code which you can use in your html and that is going to set up some by default values uh, and there are a couple of other options available if you want to show or hide the chat button you can use this uh, if you want to set some auto response uh, if you want to launch the chat you can definitely have a look at this documentation this is very useful in order to play with the variables and their values so i think that's all for the today's video the purpose was how to deploy the agent to the external website so we deployed it successfully we did the end-to-end -end test we asked about the case status and we can successfully see our agent is working without any issues uh, i hope uh, you like the video so that's how we completed all the steps uh, if you have any questions any doubts uh, you can drop a comment and you can also reach out to me on linkedin and then uh, i'll try to help you till then uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode thank you